Hello guys, welcome to the part 3 of our marriage tutorial. So I apologize for the long wait for this part 3 of the marriage tutorial. So the last time we had this output where in our main character which is Mario uh, and he's going to uh, is looking at to the left and our background such as the platform the mountain and the cloud are going to the right so for the continuation what we're going to do now is we will set our main character which is Mario going to this part uh, on the left part and we'll adjust the main character and also the platform so instead of Mario facing to the left we will make it as Mario or our main character is facing to the right and vice versa for the background the platform the mountain and the cloud so what we're going to do first is to um, set the uh, X property of our main character which is Mario so we're going to the start game procedure this is the smart uh, mario.x so to canvas that with 0 0.55 so instead of 0 0.55 we'll change it to 0 0.35 and we'll refresh our companion screen and as you can see here our main character is now on the left uh, side of our screen the next is we're going to um, make uh, our main character looking at the right so what we're going to do is go to the designer tab and upload three image for the animation of the main character Mario what we're going to do is to upload three new image file so see to it that your image is a PNG file it has no background so that we can see the no background or the transparent uh, image on our screen so we're going to upload file I have three here so B1, B2 and the B3 to upload first the B1 next is the B2 and last is the B3 so this is for the animation and for um, our components so Mario sprite we're going to change the picture to B1 and we're going back to the blocks go to the animation procedure so instead of the Mario that picture is A so as you remember earlier we uploaded B1, B2 and B3 so we'll be changing the A to B and as you can see in our uh, blue stack screen so Mario is now looking at the right next thing to do is to of course change also the platform the mountain and the cloud heading so instead of going to the right we will make it going to the left so to do that is we'll go to the platform procedure then we'll change all the condition in our platform procedure first is the platform that X so instead of uh, greater than or less than so we will be moving the condition and we'll change it to zero and of course after that change the condition to less than or equal so don't forget to change your condition to less than or equal then delete the uh, first um, the canvas width minus platform width and also in our then change it to plus instead of minus we're going to the addition so go to back and drag a plus is drag the platform to that x my uh, plus the platform to that width then remove 
to minus. Next is we will also change the platform to that x to zero and change the condition to less than or equal. So delete and also here. So duplicate the then in the first um, if. Then change it to platform instead of pla uh, platform two. Then we proceed to the else for the platform. So instead of having a plus, so we're going to make it minus. Let's have a minus. Then just drag the platform that x and the global speed. Then next, the platform 2. So we will drag out, then delete, and just duplicate the first platform. Change it to the platform 2. <clears throat> so platform 2.x. So you now see in our uh, screen in uh, Bluestack, so we have now a working platform that is going from right to the left. The next is the mountain. So instead of going to the right, you'll uh, make it going to the left. So set the mountain X. So remove also, detach the condition, delete, and then less than or equal, change it to zero. And for the mountain X, we'll be also using the minus subtraction. So instead of platform, we will change it to the mountain and remove the global speed and instead add the grid global speed add divide by 10. The next is the cloud. So instead of um, this condition, replace it with the zero. So less than or equal, then duplicate the zero. And instead of equal, change it to not equal. And for the cloud, of course, we will change it also to uh, subtraction. Then change it to the cloud. Then instead of 10, change it to 5. Let the cloud X. The next thing to do now is to change the uh, cloud that X. So instead of uh, zero, so remove the zero. So instead of this, so instead of zero, we'll replace it. Just dismiss the. Place the boat um, mountain F, X and cloud X. Then let's have a plus. Then add the platform width. So we have the platform width plus the screen width. The screen that width. have to duplicate this so we have now a working mountain that is going also to the left and the cloud that is also going to the left so it is uh, it is up to you on how you want to um, make your background speed so you just have to adjust here so instead of 10 make it 5 so make, uh, it will be make uh, faster and also the cloud set it to 2 so we can see a lot uh, uh, make our cloud and the mountain faster so instead of 2 make it 3 okay the next thing to do now is to create an enemy so we we'll go to the designer Add a um, image sprite for the enemy. 
then rename the image sprite to enemy sprite then upload three image it's up to you on how many image that you want for your uh, enemy so i have three so princess one i'll just make this uh, princess as the enemy so you can choose whatever enemy that you want princess two and princess three so the reason for us uh, making the same name but different number is for the animation and for the animation procedure so enemy uh, sprite change the picture to the princess one and we have the um, picture of the enemy sprite then let's go back to the blocks we will set the um, width and height of the enemy and also the position so what we're going to do is to duplicate the uh, height and the width of Super Mario or our main character in the start game procedure so duplicate the width and height so they have the same height the next is to duplicate also the uh, X and Y of the main character which is Mario so instead of Mario so we'll uh, change it to the enemy sprite enemy sprite and then enemy sprite so instead of the position is uh, on 0 0.35 we'll change it to 0 0.55 and for the visibility we will we'll also change the uh, visibility of Mario or duplicate the Mario visible and change it to the enemy sprite that visible to true and for the initial uh, initialize screen we need to make also the visibility of the enemy sprite to false so that enemy sprite will not show whenever we initialize our screen then let's try to refresh the companion screen and as you can see we now have our enemy on our screen what we're going to do next is to animate our enemy with that we'll go to the animation procedure so the reason for us that we'll be using the same procedure as the mario because we also have the three image as for the enemy so instead of making another procedure and making another clock so we'll just have to use the animation procedure then we'll just duplicate the mario picture and insert it at the bottom of the Mario that picture so instead of Mario change it to the enemy sprite that picture and change the B to princess so this is the name of <coughs> the image that we insert earlier or we upload earlier so we have um, now a working animation of the enemy which is the princess so you can choose whatever enemy that you want just make sure that it is animated and the next is um, we will make the heading of the enemy going to our main character so that uh, Mario can be able to jump over the enemy so the game um, so for this game Mario need to jump and must not collide with the uh, enemy character so when it collide uh, collided with the enemy so the game will be over so as you can see in our example so when we click the canvas so we can see the jumping of Mario is uh, still looking at the left so what we're going to do is go to the jump Mario initial procedure and change the Mario that picture so instead of A2 change it to B2.png and then you can see that uh, it has now the same uh, position that is looking at the right so for the heading of our um, enemy character or enemy sprite so we'll just go to the platform procedure and we will insert another else if in our um, platform procedure to do that just click the mutator in the if then else if click the mutator, mutator and add another else if so we will uh, we now have the um, 
another else if so what we're going to do is just to copy duplicate the mountain x instead of mountain x just change it to the enemy sprite and for the mountain that x set the mountain that x to so we'll just have the same and change it to the enemy sprite so for our main, uh, enemy sprite to head to the main character just uh, duplicate any of this else and then change it to the enemy sprite and change also the cloud.x to enemy sprite.x and for the speed of the uh, enemy character so it um, will check if we jump over the enemy character so if it's not um, the character is still on the track and it's not being collided with the main character so we are good to go but if you see that uh, when you jump still um, touch the enemy character or collided with the enemy character so you can change the speed of your um, enemy sprite so it will go even faster and if you think that the jump of Mario is um, it's not high uh, enough you just have to go in the jump mark initial and change the global velocity so instead of so as default we have the negative 50 and we only have this jump so instead of negative 50 change to negative 80 or it is up to your preference so this is for the velocity on how the uh, on how the main character jump and for the speed you can change the speed of the enemy sprite in the uh, platform procedure so instead of negative uh, instead of two you can change it to one so it will go even much faster you can change it back to two okay so what we're going next is when mario collide with the enemy character the game should be over to do that is we will make a um, another procedure then just uh, drag the procedure and rename it as the game over procedure so for this game over procedure so we just have to call the any clock or any uh, timer so clock timer so first is the animation clock and changed it to or set the animation clock timer enabled to false and duplicate this change the BG clock also to false okay. then next is to go to our main character which is Mario and change it or drag the when Mario collide with then let's have a if else if then and then equal for the condition so if the get other which is the mario is equal to the enemy sprite when it's collide uh with collided with the enemy sprite so what will happen so we'll just um then call the procedure which is the call game over procedure so when mario collided with so it will stop the animation clock and the background clock okay, but still they are working with here so what we're going to do is to uh, make the jumping clock also false okay. and for this we will add the restart button So go to the designer and add another image sprite for the uh, restart or the try button and change it to restart. Then upload. So uh, the companion has just disconnected. So to connect again, just click the uh, connect AI companion and copy the um, code. 
wait and after that with the restart uh, sprite you just have to upload new picture upload file and for this uh, see to it that your file is a png file and it has no background so we will set the um, height to 100 pixels and for the width 200 pixels so that's the for the retry and let's go back to our box so for the retry we need to make the um, position of the retry button so we'll just have to copy the play button so duplicate the x and y and change it to the restart that x and the restart that y so it has the same position and for the start game we also need to make the visibility of the restart that visible to false whenever uh, we restart the game then we will call the or we'll show the restart sprite so uh, set the restart visible to true then let's try it let's refresh the companion screen as you can see we have the um, retry button there what we're going to do is to set the um, visibility of the restart screen in the initialize screen or the restart visibility to false with a show in our uh, initialize screen so refresh so let's try it then we have the retry button the next is we need to make the visibility of our main character to fall so that and whenever it collided with the enemy it will it will disappear so just have to duplicate this and change it to the Mario sprite and for the position of the uh, enemy character we need to make it on this part so to do that is just have to copy the set enemy sprite here in the platform procedure and drag it with the Mario collide then let's refresh the companion screen let's try it so still uh, we need to make the Mario visible to false not true I'll start uh, refresh companion screen and play so we don't have the Mario visibility and the enemy sprite also disappear so next thing to do is to when you click click uh, when you click the uh, retry button it should start or restart the game so with the restart um, touch you just have to call the procedure start game so when we touch so we can still uh, play the game so Mario does not jump we need to make or call the um, jumping clock here true so instead of busy uh, clock jumping clock to true so we now have Mario jumping Whenever Mario collided with the um, enemy character, so the game is over. And we have the retry button or the start button so that we can play again with our game application. So if you think that your game is um, always collided with the uh, enemy character you just have to adjust the speed so instead of 2 make it 1.5 there you go so 
you have now you're working um enemy character that is uh, the heading is going to our main character which is mario so next thing to do now is for the scoreboard so for the scoreboard we need to go to the designer and add a layout add horizontal arrangement at the top of our canvas and change it the properties so center for the vertical and horizontal and change the width to fill parent and the height change it to 5% so with our horizontal let's have a two label So for the first label, uh, change the text to score. This is for just the label and make it the font fold. For the label 2, change the name to score label. For the score label, change the text to 0 and make it the font bold. And also let's add a sensors which is the clock for the score so for the clock change the clock name to score clock and for the properties of the score clock um, uncheck the timer enable and change the timer interval to 3 333 so for this uh, we'll make our score uh, add three points in every sequence. That's why that's why we set the time interval to 333. Then we go now with our uh, full blocks. So with the color of our um, scoreboard, we need to change it to the same as the canvas uh, background color, so that it will blend with our script. So to do that is just go to the initialize screen and click the horizontal arrangement set horizontal arrangement background color and duplicate the make color so that we can have the same um, color as the canvas so as you can see we now have the same color as the canvas and then for the scoring to run let's have uh, let's initialize a variable so initialize a global name global uh, name, which is the score and set the uh, initial value to zero and then for the score so click the score clock and when score clock timer so what will happen is um, to go with the score label we'll set the score label that text score label that text to then let's have a math then plus okay so get the global score which is zero and then let's have a one then go to the in, um, global score set the global score to um, the score label that text score label the text and we need to make the score clock timer enable uh, disabled first with the initialize screen so that it will not run whenever we start our game so to do that is just go to the score clock then set the score clock timer enable uh, so we don't need this because we we already set it uh, earlier with the uh, um, properties of the score clock. What we need to do now is uh, to set it in the start game. So timer enabled in the start game. Set it to true. Then let's refresh the companion screen. 
say. So, we now have the working um, scoreboard at the top. And for uh, the score to stop, we need to go to the procedure, game or procedure, and just duplicate one of this. So, score clock, time enable to false. So, it will stop whenever we have the game over. So, let's connect, uh, refresh, then play. So, the score stop, but uh, it will continue the score whenever we game over. So, to set the score to zero, we need to go here in the start game and go to the score label. Set the score, uh, not text color, just have to change it to the text and duplicate the zero. And also, we need to set the global score to zero. And connect, refresh, and play. So our score is running. Then our score stop. And we uh, click or touch the retry. So the score will go back to zero. So for the uh, sound, music, background music or background sound, so you can download through the YouTube or the internet. Just make sure that um, you set it with at least um, 3 seconds and ha uh, just have to add a uh, clock whenever ta uh, ev when you add a music and also you can add your name as, at, as the background same as the cloud for this um, Mario tutorial. Okay. So that's it. That's the end of the part 3 of our tutorial. So for the next part, which is the part 4, we need to set the high score whenever um, whenever the game is over. So we need to see the high score. So if you have any question, suggestion, or uh, queries just have to comment here in our youtube channel so see you again next time goodbye and keep safe